Hello everyone and welcome back. I am as always Inquisitor Ara and this is how to roleplay in World of Warcraft. And today we're going to be taking a look at the gnomes. Please note that these are just generally accepted guidelines to socially acceptable and lore friendly roleplay in World of Warcraft. There is a niche for every type and style of roleplay out there. What I am telling you here are the generally accepted guidelines that will not get you ridiculed. Gnomes. The often underestimated and ridiculed race is decidedly underrepresented and underappreciated because of their diminutive stature and childlike appearance. The tall folk are mistaken, however, and as a gnome, you are more than happy to use their prejudices against them. The gnomes have a very long history and are tenacious, crafty, and dangerously intelligent. Of course, one of the first things that bears mentioning is that the gnomes are descended from titan constructs. This is a trait that they share with the dwarves and the humans. Like the other races that are descended from titan constructs, the mecha gnomes, very creative name there, were afflicted by the curse of flesh unleashed upon Azeroth by the old gods and eventually evolved into the fleshy gnomes we all know and love today. The mecha gnomes were created and served the being known as Mimiron and protected the Temple of Innovation in the Storm Peaks. This is most likely the source of your engineering gifts, your engineering talents, and your prodigious intellect. Unlike most of the races of Azeroth, gnomes were relatively recently discovered by the dwarves. Very little is known about the gnomes before this point in time, however, they do have a marked presence in history. Historical records show a gnomish presence at the Council of Tearsfall, a female gnome named Indus, almost 3,000 years ago. Another gnome named Urbag was a member of the Order of Tearsfall when it empowered Awin some 800 years ago. To wit, Nomragon is a relatively young city compared to cities such as Iron Forge. It was constructed 200 years ago, about the same time that the dwarves first encountered the gnomes. And while the gnomes had a significant role in the Second War, it was during the Third War that the greatest tragedy in gnomish history took place. The reason for your absence from the Third War was because of the irradiation and hostile takeover of Nomergon by Mechanir Sikothermaplug. Sometime around year 20, Dunmoreau was infested by Trogs. Dwarves had accidentally dug into the underground prisons built by Kazgaroth to trap the Trogs, who were earthen, that were affected by the curse of flesh and mutated differently. Nomragon was overrun by the brutish creatures, but the humans and the dwarves were gearing up for war against the Scourge, and so could not help the gnomes in their time of need. So, the gnomes decided to handle the infestation on their own. High Tinker Gelbin Mechatork was tricked by Mechagnir Sicko Thermoplug into detonating a radiation bomb inside the city limits of Nomergon, making the High Tinker believe that the radiation would annihilate the Trogs. Sadly, it did not. The toxic gas did not kill the Trogs. It barely even affected them. In fact, it killed more gnomes than it did anything else, and it mutated those unfortunate enough to survive and not escape into leper gnomes. Those lucky enough to have escaped and survived the irradiation, fled Nomergon, and were granted sanctuary in Ironforge. Nomergon was then sealed off, and Thermoplug named himself the new ruler of Nomergon. However, as of the beginning of Cataclysm, the gnomes have retaken the surface and part of the underground area of the city, an area they've named New Tinkertown, and they seem to be gaining ground. Soon, Nomergon will be in their hands again. 
This pretty much brings us to the modern gnome. And at this point in time, I would like to talk about some of the most important and influential gnomes in World of Warcraft. The first, of course, would be High Tinker Gelbin Mechatork. Mechatork is the democratically elected leader of the gnomes for the past decade. He invented the Mechano Strider and the Repair Bot, and didn't become king of the gnomes until after the fall of Gnomagon. He is also one of two gnomes credited with the Deep Run Tram. I would be remiss if I didn't mention Millhouse Manastorm, a gnome mage originally imprisoned in the Architraz, a place for the most dangerous beings the Naru had ever encountered. He later joins the Twilight Hammer and gets involved in their operations in Deep Home. He becomes a final boss in the Brawler's Guild and then a garrison follower, once he changes his ways, of course. Then there is Silas Darkmoon, the founder of the Darkmoon Fair. And finally, Wilfred Fizzlebang, one of the most powerful gnome warlocks ever to exist, credited with summoning an Eridar Lord. Alright, now it's time to get into some tips and tricks of role-playing a gnome. The first thing that needs to be mentioned is that though gnomes are often seen as childlike, they are very long-lived compared to most other races on Azeroth. Gnomes do not become adults until they are 40. Middle age is at about 100, old age is about 150, and the oldest living gnomes are around 200 years old. As such, they tend to look down on the shorter-lived races as naive and unintelligent. This also means that every gnome player character who is an adult is a gnome Ragon survivor. Technology, creation, and invention are central tenets of gnomish life. The gnomish mind is dominated by deep-seated thirst for knowledge. Curiosity is hardwired into them and can lead down dark and dangerous paths. They are profoundly scientific. Gnomes take nothing on faith. Empirical evidence is a must, and they will study just about anything. They excel at logical reasoning and possess a monumental intellect to match. This probably explains why so few gnomes are religious. Gnomes have suffered one of the worst tragedies to have befallen any single race on Azeroth. All adult gnomes survived the radiation bomb of Nomergan, a near mass extinction of your people, as it is assumed that nearly 80% of all gnomes living in Nomergan at the time of the radiation bomb were killed during that time. That being said, the gnomes are still notoriously chipper, upbeat, outgoing, and friendly, though they often have difficulty interacting with other races. Their minds function so differently that sometimes they simply don't understand others. That being said, this is likely the reason why gnomes don't seem to get diplomacy, politics, or art. And while the gnomes are vastly intelligent, it is this towering intellect that often leads to instability, insanity, and chaos. They can follow dangerous lines of thought to their dangerous ends. Remember, Sycothermaplug is a gnome, and he is an excellent example of a gnome gone bad. Gnomes are tenacious, intelligent, and inventive. They have survived one of the greatest horrors and betrayals to befall any single race on Azeroth and have bounced back swinging. They are massively supportive of the Alliance, very, very close to the dwarves, and not, in fact, trifling gnomes. Well, that is going to be it from me for this week. Thank you guys so much for watching. Remember, if you like what you see and you want to see more, don't forget to hit that like button. Don't forget to comment below and don't forget to subscribe. I finally did it for you guys. I've had so many people asking me to do this gnomes video and I wanted to save it till one of the very last 
racial guides to do it for you because the gnomes are just so awesomely amazing and terrifying at the same time. So I hope you guys like what you saw here. Anyways, I am, as always, Inquisitor Aura. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have a great week, have a great weekend, and we will see you again in Azeroth.